So I'm Nick Bateman, Extension Entomologist with uh, the University of Arkansas Systems Division of Agriculture. Uh, today I'm here with Chase Floyd, a PhD student of ours working on a uh, rice bill bug. As you can see behind us, you know, we're in a pretty severe infestation here of a uh, rice bill bug just south of Stuttgart. Uh, to go over some of the work we've been doing this year, you know, we're looking at a lot of efficacy, uh, a lot of control studies, you know, looking at different seed treatments, looking at adding in Dermacore for Tenza. Seems to be some benefit there with reduced feeding. Um, we're expecting that to lead to yield increases that we've seen the past couple years. We're also looking at uh, foliar timing sprays. But uh, I'm going to turn it over to Chase and let him tell you about what he's seen this year as far as uh, he's got a big trap line across the state where he's recording when they're coming into the field, what time of year it is, gonna correlate that to the degree days and uh, things like that. So <clears throat> compared for our past two years, for 2019 and 2020, the first week of June uh, is typically our largest migration into the field. About five to seven days after that, you can begin to see dead tillers from the adult feeding of the rice plant. Um, those, those tillers will not make a head, and as they progress through the season, and as the heads start coming out of the boot, uh, we start seeing the blank heads, which is from uh, larger larva feeding. Um, across the state, we've got 16 locations, and we're about 65% infestation across the state, um, from Jackson County all the way to Deshaies County. So the species we're commonly seeing is uh, Spinosaurus pertinax. It's a large black uh, weevil. And uh, <clears throat> the larva is gonna be cream colored uh, with a brick colored head. And um, so this is one we're predominantly seeing in our rice fields, but we do have other species we've identified. Um, the zoysia grass billbug, but we're seeing at a lower percentage, about 95% pertinax to about 5% uh, zoysia grass field. So, so based on a lot of Chase's work looking at uh, when they're showing up to the field, when that's occurring, you know his peak for the past couple years has occurred right around that first week of June. It's been about four days apart the past couple years and what we've seen with our plots that, that's been between two to three tiller and four to five tiller the past couple years and that seems like the ideal time that those those females move into the field. You see some adult feeding, you see that egg lay occur at that time. We typically don't start seeing damage uh, damaged tillers, dead tillers showing up to a back green ring. Somewhere between green ring and a half inch, you can start walking out there, you'll start seeing dead flag leaves, start seeing dead leaves in general. You start pulling those leaves and you notice the tillers breaking off at the base. You know, we're in heading here, but you walk through there and you'll see a, a dead leaf and you pull it and that tiller's gonna pop off right there at the base. And that's a good way to assess some early season damage, you know. Once that egg lay occurs, once those females are out of the field, we don't know that you got a lot of control options. If you, if you do want to try a foliar spray, you're going to have to be on top of it. You're going to have to be in the field around that two to three tiller on every three or four days looking for adults moving into the field. That's going to be the time for a foliar spray. We got a lot of studies looking at that. We got a lot of data coming out this year that, that should give us more insight. Into so the way we're assessing damage in these fields, you know, this is the perfect timing. The, the rice is headed, you're starting to see blank heads, but another way to look at this is actually looking at dead tillers down there, not just blank heads. And to show you how we're doing this, I'm gonna turn this over to Chase. He's basically gonna count all the tillers, count the damaged tillers, and we're gonna figure out what percentage we've got there. So we have eight tillers here, and if you just go through and pull them up, they'll break directly at the soil line. Uh, you can see the hole. Uh, where he has been feeding or she's been feeding and so here we've got four four dead tillers on this plant so for this plant that's 50% of, yeah, of he had, he's got eight tillers on there we've got four of them dead so that's 50% right there one thing we do see is it's mainly secondary you know tillers getting fed on versus primary so our main yields coming from our primary tillers, but in this case, I mean, we're still expecting a lot of yield loss from, and this is representative of this field. We can go out here and pull random plants throughout it and we're running 25 to 50% damaged tillers or dead heads. So based off our efficacy data the past couple of years, what we do notice when it comes to seed treatments, if we add that Dermacore, that Fertenza to the mix, you know, we see a benefit there. We see reduced feeding, we see higher yields. Cruiser or Nipset alone, we're not getting a lot of control there. We think they're running out of gas prior to those. Those rice bugs actually make it to the field.
Thank you to the rice growers of Arkansas for your support to the Arkansas Rice Checkoff Program administered by the Arkansas Rice Research and Promotion Board.